So good morning, everyone. Um, welcome to uh, our uh, our last uh, Brotherhood breakfast of the uh, season this year. Um, the uh, special Brother, add to what? our uh, program. Um, I want to thank uh, our member uh, Michelle Perez and uh, uh, Rabbi Serkman, uh, and the French Consulate of New York, uh, for all for all helping to bring uh, uh, Paul Samona of the uh, Museum of Jewish History of Paris. Uh, to us for a virtual tour this morning. Um, we, uh, as I said, this was this is the last Brotherhood event uh, of the season. We'll be uh, uh, working through the summer to plan the uh, fall ahead. I say, stay tuned uh, as we, um, you know, figure out, uh, you know, between the dates, the programming, and how we're going to conduct our breakfast next year. We're looking forward to the possibility that uh, we will be back in the temple uh, and back to our, our more more conventional formatting. Not that we didn't enjoy Zoom and learn great things from it, and I think pick up a few new uh, devotees. We appreciate those who've come uh, to our events uh, very loyally. We're glad to see you, and we're glad that uh, uh, hopefully we were able to provide uh, some uh, uh, some programming and some uh, uh, good um, uh, fulfilling uh, events uh, throughout the year. Um, so uh, with that, uh, I will uh, uh, turn it over to uh, Jeff Serkman. Rabbi Serkman, uh, who will make uh, uh, additional introductory remarks. Thanks, Larry. It is great to be able to be here this morning. Uh, it's really um, uh, an auspicious day in many respects. Uh, June 6th, for those of us who know history a little bit, uh, is the anniversary of D-Day, the invasion at Normandy, American troops landing and hoping to uh, move back uh, the German forces, though they were ready, unfortunately, though uh, eventually uh, it, of course, worked, uh, the offensive. Um, France is, of course, a very different place uh, at this moment in time, as is Germany, but uh, we are always um, warned not to forget from whence we came nor the history of the past. That is how we pave the way to a better future knowing uh, we have had an ongoing conversation and connection with the French Jewish community, really largely due to our secret weapon, uh, liaison to the Legion of France, Michel Perez, who is um, just unstoppable and knows everyone, um, having shared with uh, really its leading rabbi, Delphine Herveler, and um, former Consul General, uh, uh, and Claire uh, in exploring the state of anti-Semitism and how France is combating prejudice today, racism and affront to all of us wherever we happen to be. It is really a joy to have a different feel to today, which is celebrating the history and the legacy of art and Jewish culture of France. We may not know about it, or we may know a little bit about it, but um, it's really one of the great treasures, the Jewish Museum of Paris. And to do so, of course, you will be purchasing the cheapest Air France airline ticket you ever could possibly buy, the cost of a Zoom. It is with joy that we partner yet again with the French Consul General of New York, the Honorable Jeremy Robert, who has been most gracious. He has to run to another event, but he's here of course, to introduce um, the, the, the force behind the Jewish Museum, um, uh, the director, uh, Jeremy, please. Thank you so much, uh, dear Rabbi uh, Sekman. And uh, I'm really, um, really, really happy to and honored to, to address this very large audience. Um, I can see uh, you are so many around this uh, virtual uh, table. And it's, uh, it's for me a great pleasure um, because it's, um, First, uh, it's uh, uh, one of our priority, as you said, and the priority of President Macron is to, to fight anti-Semitism. And this is a, a daily fight. We know that unfortunately, anti-Semitism is still uh, very uh, strong in France, strong in Europe, uh, strong in the US. So we need to, to fight it uh, to, together. And um, to fight it, uh, we need to, to, to use different means. Uh, they are legal means, uh, there are security means, uh, there are educational means, and there are also some cultural means. And this is exactly the purpose of uh, 
of what, what um, the Musée d'Art et d'Histoire du Judaïsme is uh, also advocating, and it's uh, allowing the, the public in France, uh, a large public in France, to see the treasury of the Jewish uh, presence in France, and the, the history, the richness of the history uh, of Judaism in France. Uh, the, uh, this history has not always been um, uh, easy. There are some tragic events, but it has always been um, uh, very rich and very strong and very old. This is uh, more than uh, uh, about 2000 year old uh, history. Uh, so um, we, we had started, as you said, my predecessor, uh, Anne Claire Lejean, had started uh, um, with the, 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 the Musée uh, d'Art et d'Histoire du Judaïsme, um, a series of uh, conference. Uh, I, I'm not going to go into details about the conference, which has been done, but they, they, they are, we, are, we held already three conferences in, uh, in, uh, in New York uh, with always a very large success uh, and a large interest and sometimes a large surprised to see how strong this uh, uh, really and how rich the, the history um, between um, I mean, of Judaism in France uh, could, could be. Um, this is also for me very uh, important to address the, the Westchester, um, I mean the Lashman Temple uh, and, uh, and I would like also to, to thank beyond you uh, Rabbi, I want to thank also uh, Michel Perez uh, of course uh, and Jen Sebel uh, for, for the help in coordinating and facilitating the organization of the event. I also would like to thank uh, Marta uh, of my team who has been uh, working very hard to organize this event and it's also very important for me to address uh, um, the, the, the Westchester community. Uh, I was yesterday in uh, Westchester for, for, the, for the, the gala of the FASNI, which is the French American School uh, of New York based in, in uh, Mama Renek. And it's, uh, uh, it's uh, always a, a pleasure to, to, to address uh, um, people in uh, Westchester, which is such a wonderful uh, place. Um, I would like also, you, you say this is the cheapest way to, to, to go to France. Uh, this, is, uh, this is true. This is why we organized it. Uh, I also would like to tell you that uh, starting uh, 9th of June, uh, so in, in three days from, from now, uh, France is reopening its borders. Uh, so this is a, a very uh, great news for, for us because, uh, and, and also for many American friends who have been waiting to, uh, to travel to France, uh, we are reopening our borders to, uh, to Americans. Uh, it has been closed for more than a year. Uh, and we open the borders for uh, Americans who have been uh, vaccinated. So after visiting virtually uh, the, the MAJ, the Museum of, uh, of uh, Art and, and History of Judaism in Paris today, I'm sure you will want to, uh, to visit it physically. So you will be more than welcome. I know the museum have uh, reopened in France and there's a very uh, strong optimism and, uh, and we will uh, be very happy to welcome you in, in presence also in, uh, in, in Paris and, uh, and in France. Thank you so much. Uh, and I will now uh, give the floor to the director of the Musée d'Art et d'Histoire uh, du Judaïsme de Paris, uh, Paul Salmona. Merci beaucoup. Merci beaucoup, Monsieur le Conseil Général. Thank you very much. <laughs> well, I'm very proud and, and a little impressed, to be frank, uh, to have to do this um, this uh, flight, as uh, <laughs> as uh, Rabbi Sarkman uh, said. Uh, well, first of all, I, I wanted to, to thank Rabbi Sarkman and Larry Gutterman and Jane Sable uh, Friedman and Jeremy Robert, of course, uh, and Michel Perez, especially Michel Perez, to be frank, and, and Marta Pessina. Uh, we, we have a long story now with Marta. <laughs> because we did organize together a series of lectures in, in New York last year, just before the, the pandemic. Uh, a very interesting series for us. Uh, so uh, I try to share my screen, uh, if you agree. So you can see um, uh, some images of the, of the museum, but not this way, of course. Uh, ba -ba -bam, this way. Um, no, that's not up. Uh, well, uh, as you can see, um, the, this uh, museum, which is uh, the most international collection in Europe about Judaism, uh, we, we have uh, the, well, the only international collection about Judaism in Europe, uh, a collection you, you can compare uh, with um, 
uh, the, the Jewish Museum in New York, uh, not so rich, but a very rich one nevertheless, or with the, the Israel Museum in, in Jerusalem. As you, as you can see on our posters, we, we address all the audiences and not only uh, the, the Jews. You could be um, uh, a bird, you could be a zebra, you could be a unicorn, you could be a mouse, you could be a princess or a superhero, you are welcome in our museum. Well, of course, this is a joke, but um, yeah, th th these were glimpses to the, the Purim uh, festival, the Purim Bowl we organize every, every spring in the museum, uh, and uh, which is a very happy and very funny moment uh, because we, we don't want to present a ser only a serious and a, and a sad uh, history of Judaism, but not uh, what um, uh, the, the very famous American uh, historian, uh, Salo uh, Wittmeyer Baron said, a tear history of Judaism. Uh, Judaism is not only, and especially in France, a valley uh, of tears. It's also a very long and, and with very interesting and happy uh, periods. Well, the museum currently uh, is installed in a very old aristocratic mansion, um, uh, L'Hôtel de Saint-Aignan. Well, hotel in that case means palace, actually. It, this was an aristocratic palace built in, at the beginning of the 17th century, uh, which has been after the revolution transformed in a very um, dynamic uh, economical place, you know, with a lot of workshop, uh, where many, many Jews from east of France at the beginning of the 19th century and of Eastern, Central and Eastern Europe uh, used to live during uh, decades. As you can see on the picture, this is a picture from the 20s. Uh, many Jewish names like Judenstein or like Pessis here. I don't see if you, I don't know if you see my mouse with the arrow. Uh, and um, many, many uh, jobs in, um, you know, hat makers, cap makers, tailors, furs, etc. Something very classical, very traditional uh, of uh, Jewish uh, jobs of uh, Im immigrants. The, the, the building was in a very bad state because it had been uh, um, transform in a private building uh, in uh, 1827, well, some 30 years after the revolution. And it, it was in a very bad state, as you can see the door here. Uh, and when the city of Paris voted in 1962, you can see the state, uh, something in, in a very bad situation. So began a, a very long, uh, a very impressive uh, campaign of restoration. Uh, here you can see the archaeological um, uh, excavation in the courtyard. Uh, the courtyard uh, has been studied completely and then we, we dig it completely and we made uh, under, the count, under, under the courtyard a very huge auditorium, 200 seats, which is a very important um, tool, if I could say, uh, of, the, um, of the museum. Well, here you can see the neighborhood. Uh, you know, we, we are installed on the um, uh, right bank of the Seine River in the Marais. The Marais is a, a very, was a very a narrow, a traditional uh, Jewish neighborhood. As I said before, um, at the beginning of the, seven, the, the, 18th, uh, the 19th century, uh, hosting uh, Jews from Alsace and Lorraine, the east of France, usually poor immigrants, well, intern immigrants. And after the, the middle of the 19th century, immigrants from all Eastern Europe, Poland, uh, Germany, Poland, uh, et cetera, Russia. Uh, well, you can see the, um, the, the museum here. It's this um, 17th century building. You can see on the, on the facade today, the posters of the future exhibitions, Chagall Modigliani Soutine, uh, Paris pour école 905-940, and the other um, I, I will explain. Well, the entrance. So this is another view during um, an opening with many people. And today, 
uh, with these uh, palm trees, which give some um, shadow because, you know, during the summer is, is very, um, the, the Conchal is very hot. Uh, well, the, the, the building was built in um, 1642, 1644. So it's, it's, a very, it's a very old building for a diplomat of the courtyard of, of Louis XIII, uh, Claude Davou, Comte de Meme. So you can see here the name of the, the owner, Davou. Um, it was, uh, you know, uh, like a state secretary uh, for the King Louis XIII, and he dealt, dealt uh, the Treaty of Westphalia, which, ga which gave uh, Alsace to France. It's a very important moment of our history. Uh, we have very interesting maps of the and drawings of the building because Pierre Lemuet, the architect, who was a very famous architect of the 17th century, what we call the le, le, le premier classicisme, the first classicism, um, published in 1677 a very interesting book of all um, his uh, buildings and. Uh, um, uh, th there are many uh, drawings and elevations of, of the Hotel de Saint-Aignan. Saint-Aignan is the name of the next uh, owner. So today we are, uh, the, the, the former um, images, you know, we are here in the courtyard at this level, and we will visit all these two levels. The first level, we, we call that l'étage noble, the noble stair, um, uh, floor, and the, uh, les combles, you know, the attic just under the roof. Um, but um, but the, the museum is not only uh, a permanent collection, it's also, well, it, I, I would say that it is a 20, 21st century museum, despite it is um, in a very old building, because we have a very important um, book uh, library with specializing books about archaeology and um, uh, history of art of Judaism and, of course, history of Jews of France. You know, it's a, it's a beautiful space. Uh, a very beautiful auditorium, as I mentioned previously, with 200 seats for cinema, theater, um, lectures, conferences, concerts, etc. It's a very important part of the activity. Here you can see uh, the image of a um, silent film, the Golem, uh, in concert in li with live music. Uh, we ha also have a very big um, bookshop. We are very proud of it because, for instance, you can see here um, the section of literature from Appelfeld to, Zang to Stefan Zweig. You know, it's the biggest, I think, in Paris, um, a section of literature with uh, from A to Z, to Z, uh, uh, Z um, with no distinction of nationality. So you can find Philip Prof, the American writer, uh, just nearby Joseph Roth, uh, the Austrian writer, but also Patrick Modiano or um, many Jewish French writers or Israeli writers from everywhere. Uh, all the fund has more than 5,000 books. It's not just a corner with some objects like in so many museums. It's, it's a real service. We don't, we don't earn money with the bookshop, but it's like a cultural service. Here on the, um, on the top, you can see one of the rare decorations of the, um, of the building of the Hotel de Saint-Aignan, because you know, when, when it was transformed in a private building in, 19, 20, in 1827, all these decorations uh, has been destroyed. Here you can see a, a painting, a wall painting by uh, Rémi Vuibert. Uh, he was a contemporary of Nicolas Poussin, a uh, painter of the beginning of the 17th century. It's a triumph scene. Well, a uh, signature in the, um, in, the, in, the, in the bookshop, etc. Well, I show you this very small Roman oil lamp because it's the oldest object we have. It was found in a, in a river in the western France, La Charente. Um, it's a, a third century lamp. And as you can see, it's decorated with a menorah and a lulav and an etrog. Well, a lemon for um, uh, the the sukkot, uh, and um, 
and uh, well, it's 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 one of the the oldest object of the collection. We know by um, archaeological discoveries that Jews were installed in France since the first century before uh, our era. Well, very few uh, remains, but some remains, especially in southern France, which was uh, colonized by the Rome, the Roman Empire. Uh, at the, the southern France was colonized at, at the first, at the second century before. This is the first room with some <clears throat> very important objects we have, like this uh, map of Jerusalem from Austria in the 19th century, or, or this um, Hanukkah, uh, a very beautiful German Hanukkah. I, I can see it, I can show it here, uh, from Germany in silver with uh, Judith and the head of Hall of Fairness just in the top. Uh, which is a, a marvelous object of, um, of jewelry, and which shows that there are human representations in Jewish art, just by the way. One other very important object of the collection is uh, this Spanish Torah uh, coming from Spain. We know that by the style. Um, uh, you, as you see, the woods are, are very decorated and uh, the leather is not um, cow, is uh, gazelle. Uh, how, how, how would you say gazelle, Michel? I don't, uh, I didn't check. A wild, um, wild animal, well, from Northern Africa or... We don't hear you. No, votre micro doit être coupé, hein, Michel. En tout cas, moi, je vous entends pas. We say gazelle also in English. You say gazelle, okay. I'm sorry. Uh, well, it's it's a very it's a very important document because, of course, it, it comes well from Spain, so it means it's before 1492, the expulsion of Jews from Spain. Maybe it was copied in Northern Africa. Maybe in uh, in still in Spain, we don't know exactly. We just recognize the style, but it's a very precious one. Well, one of the oldest Torahs in, in Europe, probably. Uh, the next room shows a series of uh, tombstones from a Parisian Jewish cemetery um, uh, of the Middle Ages, um, found in 1849. And of course, it's a very interesting uh, collection because we have the names and the names of the fathers of many uh, Jews who lived in Paris before the, the expulsion. Uh, Jews were expelled from France uh, three times in uh, 1182, uh, 1306, and 1394. 1394 is the last expulsion, one century before Spain. It's a very big one. Um, and it, it should be, uh, it must be a very important date in, in um, European history. Uh, and unfortunately, the, the, the most known date is uh, the Spanish expulsion, but the first expulsion was done in France. But the reality also is that Jews came back to France um, in, the, in the Eastern France, in Lorraine, for political and technical reasons for the, the French crown uh, during the 16th century, and along the coast, uh, coming from Spain and Portugal, because the, the, the French crown was in, in war with the Spanish crown, so they accepted Jews from, <clears throat> from Spain and, and Portugal. Uh, these are the only um, tombstones, Jewish medieval tombstones, found in situ in France. We know by archives around 130 cemeteries, but the only cemetery, cemetery who who delivered some tombstones in archaeological context is, is, is Paris. All the other tomb, tombstones has been sold all, um, all over the France, sold by the crown after the expulsion because the crown took the, the, the lands and the buildings of the Jews and uh, all the, the, the tombstones have been reused in other buildings. So we know some, but never found um, in, in the main place of the cemetery. Uh, at, at right, you can see a very beautiful um, painting by Marc Chagall, the cemetery gates. 
Um, it's on loan from the Centre Pompidou, the Musée d'Art Moderne. And of course, it's the cemetery of Vitebsk. It's a um, 1917 uh, painting by Chagall and one of the most interesting um, Jewish uh, inspired paintings by, by Chagall. <clears throat> Uh, well, I should also mention as um, very interesting and very old pieces, this, uh, these P.U. team by uh, a very famous uh, um, Spanish rabbi who traveled through France, through southern France and then emigrated to Algeria, Shimon Ben Semadouran. Uh, it's a very interesting document because it's a 172 pages parchment, well, a manuscript of parchment, uh, and he, um, uh, he remained, it remained in, in the family of the rabbi, uh, hand, the family hands of the rabbi uh, till the 20th century. And at the end of the 20th century, they did organize um, a family meeting and they decided to give it to the museum. Well, it's a, a very precious one. Another precious object is this uh, Hanukkiah, um, uh, this Gothic Hanukkiah, uh, coming from an archaeological site in Lyon, in, um, in the eastern France, in the middle of France. Uh, and it's one of the very, very rare uh, medieval Jewish objects we have, French medieval Jewish objects, uh, except the tombstones and accept manuscripts in the National Library. There was a very important uh, um, rabbinic school in, in Northern France. You probably know Rashi, Rabbi uh, Shlomo Ben, uh, ben Itzak at Sarfati, um, uh, Solomon, the, the son of Isaac, the French. Um, but um, in the museum, we have very few objects. And in French museums, there are very few objects, probably because Jews left France with their uh, ritual objects. Uh, another section, a very rich section, as I mentioned, we have an international collection, um, a, a collection gathered at the very beginning in the 19th century by the grand grandfather of the very famous uh, French anthropologist, Claude Lévi-Strauss, Isaac Strauss. Uh, he was a violinist and a director and uh, the organizer of the bowls at the courtyard of uh, Napoleon III. He was very wealthy and he bought a lot of Judaica all around the world, well, all, all around Europe. And he bought especially this amazing holy ark, uh, which is a, an, an, an amazing uh, inlaid work. You know, well, you, you can see the, the, the incredible work here. Um, it comes from <clears throat> uh, Modena in Italy uh, it's dated 1472, so it's probably one of the oldest uh, piece of furniture of French museum collection, not only Jewish. Uh, as, you, as you can see, it's what we call gothic flamboyant. I don't know how to say it in English, um, but you can compare it very easily with one object of the um, cloisters, which is this credenza, it's not a Jewish object, but it's the same craftsman, the same workshop. We, we know that very precisely. And you can see the work is very close. Uh, in, in the Italian collection, there are also a series of, of paintings by um, Venetian painter Marco Marcuola uh, uh, with very, very rare scenes of Jewish life in Venice in the 18th century. A wedding, um, a circumcision, a funeral, and a cemetery, uh, which are very, very rare documents about this um, Jewish life in Venice. As you know, um, Venice uh, had a very important Jewish community uh, till the Shoah, till the Holocaust. Uh, and uh, the ghetto was invented, well, unfortunately, in Venice in 1516, but, um, but many Jews remained in, in, in Venice till the emancipation. Well, um, the, the, the French invasion uh, by uh, Napoleon, by Bonaparte, um, at the, the end of the 18th century, opened the doors of the ghetto. 
So these, these, are, these are not very good paintings in terms of artistic painting, but very precious documents about uh, Jewish life, of course. Uh, another section is about Amsterdam and uh, the gathering of two communities in Amsterdam. Because before the expulsion of Jews from, um, from uh, Spain and Portugal at the end of the, um, the 15th century, uh, there was a, an Ashkenazi community in Amsterdam, and then um, arrived many Jews from, uh, from Spain and Portugal along the French coast, by the way. Uh, and what happens? Yes. Uh, and we have, for instance, this wonderful painting of uh, this landscape of Amsterdam. At, at left, you have the small uh, Ashkenazi synagogues, which are now currently um, the Yotz Historisch Museum, the Jewish Historical Museum of Amsterdam, uh, with a very interesting uh, collection about Jews in, in Holland, and especially in Amsterdam. And that's right, this amazing uh, syn Portuguese synagogue, which is still exactly the same with no electric power, just candles, and in perfect state, uh, built by uh, Portuguese and Spanish Jews uh, in Amsterdam. And um, if you follow, well, currently this canal is, uh, is a road. And if you follow this axis, uh, you will arrive uh, in the Jewish road where Rembrandt used to live. Um, another very important document we show that nearby this, um, this room is this um, Haggadah, uh, this Passover Haggadah, uh, which was copied uh, and decorated in, in pen uh, on parchment in 1731, but by an anonymous scribe. Uh, it's inspired by two um, I do a gadot from uh, Amsterdam and Venice, but it's uh, print, but this one is not print. Um, and it's, it's, it's a very fresh document. It's a recent gift to, to the museum. Another, another amazing um, object we have is this very bourgeois uh, sukkah, this very bourgeois hut for the Sukkot festival uh, from, um, from southern Germany or northern Austria, we don't know exactly. What we know is that here there is a lake and the landscape is something connected with the, um, the landscape of um, uh, like the, the Constance uh, landscape. I don't see the hour and I don't find my, my phone, so I don't know if I'm too long or not. No, no, um, go ahead. Go ahead, okay. Uh, as you can see at, at left, uh, it's painted and uh, there is a, a landscape of Jerusalem with the two mosques and, um, and the, the, the wall, the, the Kotel here, the yellow. And then it, it becomes um, a middle, um, uh, middle Europe landscape. You know, it's, it's symbolically, it's very interesting because you can see on the, on the painting that um, the, uh, the Holy Land and the usual landscape of these uh, Austrian or German Jews are closely connected. As you can see, a panel is missing because this uh, sukkah was like um, a beach hut, you know, with uh, many panels, 37 panels. It was uh, planned to be uh, built each year and uh, um, during the, the whole year, uh, probably uh, stocked in the attic or in the cellar, I don't know. And uh, when uh, Laurent Sigal, my predecessor, bought it in Amsterdam in an auction, the 17 panel uh, was missing. And 20 years after, we found it. So we, it is currently in restoration and uh, we, will, we will install it uh, very closely. Uh, as you can see, uh, these are very uh, middle Europe, uh, Europa buildings you know, the bulb, uh, church, etc. cetera. Um, another important section is the section about um, the, the, Ashken the Ashkenazi traditional uh, life. And we fortunately have um, 
an, an amazing series, you see only uh, six or seven on this picture, series of models of these um, pagod uh, wooden built synagogues of Eastern Europe. Um, we say pagod, but uh, there is nothing to see with um, Chinese architecture. Actually, uh, it's Polish architecture. Many of these synagogues were uh, destroyed during pogroms and during the First World War and uh, then during the Shoah, etc. Uh, and these synagogues were built, it's a very interesting story, um, in the schools of the ORT. I don't know if you know ORT in, in Westchester or in New York. It's an international organization to teach Jews to um, uh, practical uh, jobs, uh, craftsmen, Craft. yes, crafts, uh, etc. Uh, and they have uh, schools in France and also in Northern Africa. Uh, Northern Africa was French at this moment. And these synagogues were built in Northern Africa just after the Second World War, which is very strange. Uh, and currently we have a small exhibition about this collection because we studied very closely with the, um, the staff of the art, uh, how they uh, documented these uh, buildings to build it uh, during the, the, the beginning of the 50s. Here you can see they are really masterworks and with the time they become very beautiful. Uh, another very uh, original collection is the collection of Mapot. Um, well, I, I would say you would, you would uh, call it Torah binders. Um, Mapot is um, an Alsatian tradition. Uh, and the tradition is to cut the circumcision nappy, to sew it in, into long strips, to embroider it, and then the boy brings it to the synagogue when he's three years old. So the mappa uh, swaddles the uh, Torah and it's a, it's a very powerful symbol of, um, of, of the covenant. Uh, it's, it's, a, it's, a very interesting, it's a very interesting piece, the mappa, because we have the name of the boy, we have a lot of uh, um, elements about him and uh, very interesting decorative ele elements. Um, and very recently, my, my colleague Claire de Combes, the chief curator of the museum, discovered in the, um, in the Geniza of uh, an old Alsatian synagogue, a series of 240 mapot, which, is, uh, which are now in Strasbourg and we, which are now the, the, the most important European collection of mapot. Here you can see some details. It's, it's embroidered or it could be also painted. Uh, just a glimpse to the, the attic uh, with the collection of the attic. Uh, on this showcase, you can see a series of uh, Judaica, um, Judaica uh, which are items looted during uh, the Second World War and returned to the museum by the Jewish um, restitution um, Jewish reconstruction. Uh, well, I don't remember exactly the, um, the meaning of YIRSO, uh, the, the acronym of uh, uh, Jewish Restitution Succession Organization. Or I don't remember exactly. Uh, in, during the 50s, these are orphans' objects, uh, if I could say. Uh, it's very difficult to find where uh, they came and to, to give it back to the owners if. They still have um, survivors. Uh, so we present it uh, as a showcase about uh, the looted objects during the Shoah. Uh, a very beautiful um, Torah um, uh, chest and Torah scroll from the Kamondo family from Istanbul in, in Turkey. Uh, as you know, Turkey had a, a very um, important uh, Jewish community uh, and still has uh, coming from uh, Spain after the expulsion. And um, some of the members of this community, my family, for instance, uh, but the members of my family were not bankers. 
But the Camondo were very wealthy bankers. They, they came to France at the beginning of the 19th century. They became very generous uh, patrons from French museums for, for the Louvre. Uh, there is a very important collection of their paintings in the Musée d'Orsay now. They um, patroned the building of the Théâtre des Champs-Élysées, one of the, the most important uh, opera uh, halls in, in Paris. Um, and the last member died during the Shoah. And uh, they came from Istanbul with very beautiful objects. Uh, following the, the attic, you will see um, the Northern African collection, because as you probably know, um, the majority of the French Jewish community now come from, comes from uh, Northern Africa, Tunisia, Morocco, and mostly Algeria. Um, uh, Algerian Jews were French since 1870. Um, just a minute, I, I, I take a, a little water. And, and talking about Algeria, this is a chauffard um, with, um, with the, the ostrich feather to clean it which comes from um, southern Algeria, the, uh, a, a, a town uh, known as is called Laguat, where there was a small Jewish community and these Jews, of course, emigrated to France. Uh, a beautiful painting of the synagogue of Constantine, also in Algeria. And here, a very, um, a very dynamic uh, session with uh, children about uh, the um, Northern Africa collection. Um, we have a, a, an amazing series of uh, potteries from a um, Tunisian family, the Shemla, and especially this panel, uh, very uh, with uh, Iranis uh, inspiration, and uh, many documents, a very rich collection about the Shemla family. Like, as you can see in this showcase, uh, if someone between you know the, the word poncif, which which like um, topos in, in Greek, these are original poncif. Well, uh, it's, it's an interesting example, this showcase, because they had a very dynamic uh, workshop in Tunis, and they, they worked with Christian and, and Muslim uh, workers, potters, and at the very beginning, they made a very traditional pottery like this. But at the end of their life, uh, during the 30s, they made um, uh, a lot of tiles like this, which were, um, which were uh, sent to uh, United States. And many, many buildings in, in California, for instance, have decoration with the Shemla production. Well, a view of the, the Alger synagogue. And um, a wonderful um, wedding dress from Tetuan in Morocco with gold uh, wire. Two portraits from Algeria. This is very interesting uh, because it's the, the, the very first portrait of Jews from Northern Africa, you know, still very serious, of course. Uh, more serious than, um, than Protestant uh, Dutch portraits of the 17th century. Um, well, we come back to France, and uh, this is a, a, a painting of the first synagogue built in France after the emancipation. Well, when I say the emancipation, I mean um, 20, 27 of September uh, 1791, during two, 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 two years after the destruction of La Bastille, during the French Revolution, the, the assembly gave the civil rights to Jews to, of France, which is something completely new in the history of Europe, you know, because to have the status of citizenship, you have to come back to the Roman Empire for Jews. Uh, and during the 19th century, Jews in France have been able to enter in all uh, the areas of the um, political, uh, intellectual, cultural, industrial, commercial life, except, of course, uh, the church. Uh, and this, this was the first synagogue built in uh, 1812 in Bordeaux, precisely by this Portuguese community. 
Um, this is a very recently acquired painting of a meeting organized by Napoleon, the emperor, in um, 1807 of rabbis of all uh, the empire, mostly French, but also Italian and Belgian, and uh, from Belgium and from Holland, um, to oblige, I have to say oblige, them to recognize that the common law is more important than the Jewish law, the halakha. So uh, it's the base of the, um, the integration of Jews in France. And uh, after this moment, um, the, the Judaism will be something very private and Jews will, uh, will become very uh, Republican citizens and very uh, engaged uh, in, in the life of the, um, of the city. Um, <clears throat> The end of this uh, attic with, uh, well, this is a portrait of uh, Adolphe Crémieux who gave the citizenship to Jews of Algeria in 1870. Uh, well, to the, the only anti-Semitic document, uh, a poster of the election of uh, September 1889 by Adolphe Léon Villette, an anti-Semitic candidate at this, these elections, uh, we, have, we have many anti-Semitic uh, documents, but we only show one, this one, just in front of this portrait of the very famous actress of the beginning of the 18th century, the 19th century, Rachel, Rachel um, um, an, an American historian published recently, well, uh, 10 years ago, a very interesting biography about her. Uh, she was the daughter of, of a very poor um, Alsatian uh, man, and at 17, she was already like uh, Catherine Deneuve, uh, if I could say. Uh, and um, she is a symbol of integration uh, during, uh, and the ability of France to integrate Jews during the 19th century. Uh, but just in France, in front, we, 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 we showed this uh, poster because it shows how appears at the end of the century, this new uh, anti-Semitism uh, not on a religious basis, but on a racial basis in France and in Germany. Well, the guy was a good uh, drowner, but uh, he, 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 com he makes the confusion between the Talmud and um, the tables of the law, just as you can see. Well, uh, we also have an amazing collection about the Dreyfus affair. And I show you some drawings recently acquired uh, in an auction with Emile Zola, the writer, Alfred Dreyfus himself, uh, the woman of uh, Lucie Dreyfus, the woman of uh, the, the Captain Dreyfus. Wife. Uh, pardon? The wife of. Uh, the wife. Um, um, thank you. I, I, you know, I know. <laughs> Merci, Michel. Allez-y, n'hésitez pas. <laughs> Ludovic Trarieux, who was the creator of um, the Ligue des Droits de l'Homme, the. Um, organization of uh, human rights, if I could say. Uh, okay. And uh, the attic ends with a small section about um, Jewish presence in the art of the 20th century with uh, some paintings by Modigliani, um, uh, uh, well, before I should mention this, uh, it's, a, it's a painting by Simon Monzin, a Polish painter who immigrated to France in the, during the, at the beginning of the 20th century. Uh, and it, it, on this painting, he shows uh, a dyed soldier during the First World War. Uh, and it's a very interesting symbol of the, the commitment of, Jew, of uh, foreign Jews in the French army during the war. And just in front, you can see this uh, naked woman, which, which uh, who symbolizes the, the nation. And the nation has nothing to offer to the, to the widow and the daughter. Uh, comment dire, uh, qu'elle est qu désemparée. Uh, they, they, they feel abandoned. Yes. Um, and I, I also show you a series of um, um, wood wooden, carvings. Yeah, wood carvings by Hanna Orloff. Hanna Orloff is a very interesting artist uh, from uh, Lithuania who came to Paris at the beginning of the 20th century. And these um, 
uh, wood carvings, uh, where it's a series of 12. I bought it for five, for uh, yes, 500 euros um, eight years ago, which means that we can enrich the collection sometimes with very few means. Uh, in the collection, we have also very interesting drawings from um, the Shoah, if I could say, because uh, for instance, this drawing is a, a portrait by Sber, a very good artist uh, who made a, a an amazing series of portraits in the Camp de Bonne La Rolande, in the Bonne La Rolande camp. Uh, it's a, it was a camp before Drancy and before uh, the deportation to Auschwitz. Um, and of course, uh, after the opening of the museum in 1998, well, I didn't mention that, uh, well, the, the, the museum is quite recent. It opened in 1998 uh, with the support of the City Hall and of the Ministry of Culture. Uh, and, uh, and it's a non-profit organization, independent, but with the help of the, 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 the state and the, and the city. Uh, we also gathered a very important photographic collection uh, uh, an amazing series of pictures by Helmar Lersky, a Jewish German um, photograph photographer who lived in the United States, then came back to Germany, uh, worked in cinema in Germany, and then immigrated to the Yishuv. And strangely, uh, he, lived, uh, he left uh, Israel in May 1948. It's a very strange story. Um, he, he has the number one card uh, member count of the um, Palestinian, but it means Jews, uh, Jewish uh, Association of Photographers created in the Yishuv in, 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 um, in Palestine. Uh, a, a wonderful series of uh, American uh, photographer Nathan Lerner, mostly pictures of Chicago, uh, a gift of the widow, some beautiful pictures by Robert Capa. This is in, in uh, 1948 uh, Israel, of course. A, a wonderful series of uh, pictures of, um, of Patrick Zachman, a French photographer. We will organize an exhibition during um, next winter. Uh, we made an amazing series of Jews in France in the 80s. It's the most uh, impressive um, uh, landscape of uh, French uh, Jewry at the, at the end of the 20th century. Uh, and also a wonderful uh, series of um, <coughs> photogra photographs of uh, Iranian Jews by Michel Abansour. Here, here we, you can see Khomeini, as you, as you can notice. Uh, well, this drawing is not at its place, but uh, another series of drawings uh, of the camps by Boris Tazlitsky, um, a French artist who was deported in Buchenwald and we, who <coughs> was a, a very good painter and um, resistance organization, the communist resistance organization organized to uh, furbish him in, um, in uh, good paper and good uh, pens, etc. And of course, some contemporary artworks, this uh, sent, uh, sent book by uh, Micha Ullman, the Israeli artist. These uh, Colonne de Guéry, this is, this is um, terracotta, uh, well, ceramics, uh, by French artist uh, Georges Jean-Claude. Um, it's the monument for a killing of Jews in France in 1944 um, in the center of France. And so this is um, uh, the model, but uh, at the scale one, the model of a bronze, which is in, uh, installed in the landscape in a very small, uh, very small uh, uh, village. Uh, and also a very interesting uh, piece by the very famous artist, Sophie, French artist Sophie Kahl, the Eruv of Jerusalem. You know, as you can see, you can recognize all these, um, uh, well, Comment est-ce qu'on dit les... les, les... Aidez-moi, Michel. Uh, columns? Pillars? Oui, oui. sur pillars. lesquels est installé le fil de fer de l'Hérouf de Jérusalem. 
Pas, pas simple. Hein? Uh, non. Uh, we, we have a professional translator, Virginia, uh, who may help us there. Virginia, can... Yes. Hi, good morning. Je sais, Mona, répétez-moi ce que c'est. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say what, what, what it is. Ce sont des poteaux, comme des poteaux télégraphiques, sur lesquels euh, est installé un fil de fer qui symbolise les rouves de Jérusalem. Donc l'emplacement, la zone au, au milieu de laquelle, pendant Shabbat, on peut transporter des choses comme si on était à l'intérieur de la maison. OK. So these are poles that have an electric... Um... Uh, Not wire. electric. We, we have wire. no power. Oh, okay. Wire. Okay. A wire. A wire. Just a wire. wire. Yeah. And it symbolizes the space within which, during Shabbat, you can transport sacred. It's a sacred space defined in Jerusalem. Well, the Eruv. The Erev. Erev. Ah, okay. I'm sorry. Well, French pronunciation. I'm, I'm, I'm so absolutely sorry. Uh, another piece. Uh, a contemporary piece by um, American, uh, Israeli artist Sigalit Landau. Uh, it's the, um, the cast of, um, of a shelter in Tel Aviv, a bronze cast of a shelter. You can recognize here the stairs of the shelter, cast in bronze and uh, shown uh, in the courtyard of the museum. And this is the very funny uh, picture of the installation of the, uh, the sculpture. Um, well, I, I mentioned very quickly uh, the auditorium, many, many uh, lectures and conferences in the auditorium. Many, many, also many uh, events for children. Uh, we, we welcome children from everywhere and not only Jewish schools, And this is very important for us. Well, I already mentioned uh, the, 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 the bookshop, I'm sorry. Uh, many temporary exhibitions. We have uh, four, uh, three, uh, under trois, quatre, four spaces for temporary exhibitions. And it's, it's a very important part of the cultural program of the museum. Um, so I show you some uh, posters, Freud, Elena Rubinstein, Elmar Lersky, the, 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 um, uh, the expressionist photographer, uh, uh, an unknown Jewish French painter, Jules Adler, painter of the people. Um, a very interesting series of photographs by Adolfo Kaminsky, a uh, Russian Argentinian French Jew um, who was a, uh, who was a forger. Yes, yeah. uh, he made thousands of uh, fakes, uh, identity um, fakes for the Haganah, the French resistance, the Stern group during the 40s, and then for um, liberation movements uh, of uh, the third world, world during years and years till the 70s. And, uh, and in 1970, he immigrated to Algeria and he came back to France. He's very old, but still alive. He has 95 years old now, and he's, he was a very good photographer. The, um, the Faces of Moses, a very ambitious exhibition, uh, the, an exhibition of the paintings of uh, Arnold Schoenberg. And well, currently, um, this small exhibition about um, a Polish journalist who lived in Paris and who published uh, in 1941, uh, 1951, This book we recently translated, Unsere uh, Verpeidigte Kinsler, if you understand Yiddish, Nos Artistes, our mart martyrs artists. Well, I guess you, you understand the French and English. It's the, the, the words are the same, are the same. Um, which is an amazing work uh, published only in Yiddish in 1951, about 84 dead artists during the Shoah. Uh, artists, Jewish artists living in France but mostly coming from Eastern Europe. And this book is, is a very important book, but of course there are very few uh, Yiddish speaking art historian, and there are very few Yiddish speaking, um, uh, well, je ne vais pas y arriver là, Michel. Il oui. y, y a peu d'historiens d'art qui parlent Yiddish, et il y a peu de Yiddishophones qui sont historiens d'art. <laughs> 
there are not many people who speak Yiddish and who are at the same time historians. Yes, so uh, the, the book was not really uh, valuable and um, we, we, uh, we did organize a translation and uh, I hope we will find an American publisher to publish it in English because it's um, a 300 uh, very precious uh, book. Uh, and so um, to, to promote it, we organize a small exhibition about Fenster itself, himself. You, you have his head here and a portrait here and, um, and all his uh, circle. You know, he was uh, uh, what, we, what they call in Yiddish a kulturtour, uh, um, like a militant of the Yiddish culture during the 20s and the 30s and the 40s in France. Uh, he opened um, uh, a cafe, the Swedish, uh, the Swedish Winkel, uh, Rue Richer, um, and uh, he, he did organize uh, exhibitions, uh, lectures, uh, etc. And of course, uh, uh, like um, a canteen. Uh, between um, the artists he mentions uh, in the book, he mentions uh, an artist called uh, Arkady Lochakov, Russian origin, who painted in 1933, this man, David Knut, and this man was um, the organizer of the um, powerful hand, La Main Forte, the first resistance, the first Jewish resistance organization in France in 1940. Uh, and after the war, he became the secretary of the Centre de Documentation Juive Contemporaine. He was a Russian poet, he married, um, he married the daughter of um, Skriabin, the, the, the Russian <clears throat> uh, musician, composer. Uh, and um, he was a revisionist, uh, was close to the, to the Jabotinsky movement. Uh, and he, he had a very important role during the, the war. For us, it's, well, it's a recent acquisition. Um, it's a very strange symbolic painting. And for us, it's very interesting because we want to develop in the, um, in the permanent collection, uh, all this, uh, a very big section about resistance and rescue. Because, you know, 75% of French Jews or Jews of France have been saved during the war which is um, a figure you, you, you never find in, in, in Europe. And it's uh, due to uh, rescue and resistance organizations like the Main Forte. Uh, you know, this is from the Bible. L'Eternel nous a fait sortir du pays d'Egypte d'une main forte. But uh, you, you, could see, you could say it in English better than I could do. God led us out of Egypt with a strong hand. Yes, thank you. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> this is the next big exhibition, Chagall, Modigliani, Soutine, Paris pour École. Uh, it's about all these artists, who, all the artists who came to Paris to study and to become artists uh, coming from their Jewish community, not always very well accepted in their community uh, and very well accepted in Paris. So it's it's uh, currently in installation, so I just this is from, from well, uh, Soutine, a series of uh, portraits by Hannah Orloff, I mentioned, uh, and a series of uh, pictures by Marc Vaux, a French photographer who, who made pictures from all the workshops of these artists who lived in Paris. So in a certain way, the small exhibition about Fenster, it's the end of the story of Paris pour école. This is the catalog. Uh, you know, it's, it's the first catalog in the story of all the museum of all the world who has been published 14 months before the opening due to the pandemic, of course. Well, um, we, we very uh, often, we use very often the courtyard for festivals. Uh, this is during La Fête de la Musique with Chefita. Uh, every 21st of June with Shefita, um, an Arab Israeli, uh, no, no, she's not Arab, but she sings in Arab, in Arabic. Uh, she's an Israeli singer, very funny and very good. Um, 
we have also an, an event each October, uh, first, uh, the, the first uh, weekend of October called La Nuit Blanche in the Cantillant. This is a very... Yep. The White Night, yes, of course. Um, thank you, Michel. <laughs> Uh, this is a Boltanski uh, happening with uh, artificial snow, a uh, very beautiful happening. And well, I finish with the Purim festival you have already seen. Uh, Michel asked me to mention uh, my personal passion. So <laughs> uh, it's about archaeology because as I mentioned, um, uh, they are Jews in France since 2000 years, since, since the Roman uh, colonization. Uh, and uh, I recently published in this um, small uh, publisher, La Découverte, um, a book about the archeology span of, of Judaism in, in, in France uh, through, uh, through the, the centuries. Uh, and with, especially with recent discoveries, and I just show you these two pictures of this sarcophagus of a Roman woman and her husband, c'est bien husband là, hein? on est d'accord. Oui. <laughs> uh, and her name is Pompeia Judea, as you can read, which means Pompey, Pompeia, the Jew. Uh, and it's the first, it's a discovery of 2009. And it's the first mention of a Jew in the history of France. And it's from the third century. So it's, it's a really a, a new, uh, a very important discovery uh, for the knowledge of uh, the, the Jewish presence in, uh, in France. Uh, I guess it's the last. <laughs> uh, well, I, I have to, to add that um, we, we plan to reorganize completely the museum uh, to give more space for the, um, for the uh, the, the history of Jews of France, beginning with the sarcophagus and ending with the contemporary situation. Because um, the, the Musée d'Art et d'Histoire du Judaïsme is the only museum in Europe which could um, talk about the contemporary Jewish presence. In France, we, as, as I mentioned, we have a very important Jewish community around six, uh, 600,000 or 700,000 Jews. We don't know exactly because in France we have no um, we have no figures, but uh, we know no. more or less. Uh, no, no, no census based on religion. Yeah. Yes, on religion. We are only citizens. We we own the the community of citizens in France. It's quite different uh, with the United States. And um, we, we would like to, to give more space for the, the French history of Jews till the contemporary, including the rescue, the resistance, the rebirth of um, uh, Jewish organization after the war, the arrival of Jews from Northern Africa, which is something very important in the 60s. And um, we will have a completely new museum, I, I don't know, in 2026, probably. Uh, but you, you, you still can visit it the way it is because it's a very beautiful, beautiful museum, nevertheless. Thank you. <laughs> Je aucune idée de I'm completely lost and I have yeah, no idea of about, the hour. Yeah, I think we're about, we're about on time. Uh, maybe, uh, Paul, you, you want to show us uh, the last picture of the, the museum, perhaps the courtyard, and I think then uh, Larry will... Uh, uh, we'll take it from here and uh, uh, to head uh, into the question and answer session if we have time. Okay. The courtyard. This way? Voilà. Oui, oui, très bien. Larry? Yeah. Larry? Thank you, Paul, very much. Um, we have a few questions uh, to, to start with um, that uh, some, of our, some of our participants have forwarded. Uh, uh, one question asks uh, very simply, uh, when uh, 
when did the museum open? When was it founded? I do recall a uh, reference to 1962 to France, uh, uh, or I guess the city acquiring the uh, the building. Um, if you go into that, and maybe just a little bit on any Jewish museums or exhibits or interpretive work on Judaism uh, uh, prior to the museum's uh, founding, uh, that would be great. Um, yes, yes, I have been a, a little um, a little quick on these uh, topics. Uh, well, the building was uh, acquired by the um, city hall in uh, 1962, but with no Jewish project at this moment. Uh, but um, and the idea of a Jewish museum uh, in France uh, uh, was born during the 70s. To be frank, there are Jewish museums mm -hmm. in, in in many um, European uh, capitals, but there was not Jewish museum in France for many reasons. It, 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 would, it should be too long to explain just now. Um, and uh, the decision to create the museum in, the, in, in our building was taken in 1985 by the, the mayor, Jacques Chirac, who became uh, president uh, after, and by uh, Jacques Long, at this moment, uh, Ministry of Culture. And uh, in 1988, Laurence Sigal, my predecessor, was uh, chosen. And she opened the museum 10 years after, after a very important restoration and uh, a series of acquisitions, etc. What was the, the end of the question? I think you've uh, I think you've answered it in terms of giving some background, uh, okay. which is great. Uh, I'm going to ask if you stop your screen share so we could see you a little better. Yes, on the screen. yes, of course. Here. With pleasure. Yeah, perfect. Okay. All right. That's great. Um, so, so great. I um, let's see the. Uh, we saw um, there are a few questions about organizing guided visits for children and how many school children uh, or how much of the collection is known by school children in France. Uh, but I think based on when that question came in, you almost you pretty much answered it during the presentation. And that was very uh, that was very heartening to uh, uh, to see. Um, the, uh, we received around. Of uh, 15, uh, uh, 15,000 children a year. Mm. How many visitors a year approximately? Well, if you mean last year, very few. <laughs> because we well, have maybe, <laughs> maybe, maybe two or three years before that, the average. <laughs> no, of course, of course. Uh, in 2019, uh, 125,000, mm. which is a good figure. The the best sure. uh, the best figure was for the Rembrandt exhibition uh, ten years ago. But of course, uh, you know we, we cannot organize a Rembrandt and the and the the, and the new J Jerusalem and the connections between Rembrandt and the Jews of Amsterdam every year. It, it would be too expensive and too well. And of course, you cannot repeat uh, all the the, the same uh, issues every year. Okay, I have a few questions here about, uh, you know, about the Holocaust and anti-Semitism. Um, could the museum become a tool to educate the general public and thus combat anti-Semitism? Uh, why does the museum not have more exhibits on anti-Semitism? Are there exhibits on the Holocaust or expulsions from France? Maybe, well, maybe sort of take those questions together. I have to mention that we share the work, if I could say, with the Shoah Memorial, which is based at 800 meters, so very close, also in the Marais. So the mission of the Memorial de la Shoah, the Shoah Memorial, is specially based on, on, the, on the Shoah history and the, uh, the genocides, and more widely on the genocides, Rwanda, mm -hmm. uh, etc., uh, Armenians, but mostly Jews. So we work a lot about antisemitism and uh, discriminations, etc., with the children, but uh, in the collection or in, in the temporary exhibition, we prefer to uh, stress on positive aspects of Jewish life. Because we know that they, they, except the, um, the children who come with the school, 
when visitors come to the Jewish Museum here, they don't need to be teached about anti-Semitism or discriminations. They are very open to Jews and they already know um, what happened with uh, the Jewish history. Uh, so we prefer to um, organize exhibition about the creation, the productions of uh, Jewish societies and not on destruction, if I could say. But of course, these topics arrive uh, in, inevitably, if I could say. Um, uh, for instance, um, we did organize some years ago uh, uh, an exhibition called From Superman to the Rabbi Cat about <laughs> Jews in, in um, cartoons, in, uh, in comics. And of course, a very important part of uh, Jewish artists were um, engaged in the um, in United, especially in United States, uh, in, in comics against the Nazis. Uh, and if we take the, the, the personal story of uh, uh, Gottlieb, Marcel Gottlieb, a very famous French artist, uh, comic artist of the 70s, uh, his father died, uh, was departed, and he was um, hidden children, etc. So we cross. The, the story of the Shoah and the discrimination, etc., very regularly in our exhibitions, but it's not the main the main topic, if I could say. Mm -hmm. and, oh, and thank you. Larry, I think I should add that the teaching about the Shoah now is mandatory uh, at the high school level in France. You know, every child going to school learns about the, the Shoah. Yes, but you know, Michel, uh, and you are, you are absolutely right, but the problem is that the only thing they learn about Jews is, in the best case, the Dreyfus affair at the end of the 19th century and the Shoah. So um, the only vision they have about Judaism and Jews is the vision of victims and dead bodies. So we, our mission is to show that Jewish life is something. We are not only bodies, if I could say. <laughs> well, I'm sorry for the expression. It's a little brutal, but uh, it's to be quick. <laughs> I see. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, I have an interesting question here. In the Venetian wedding painting, it appeared that the men and women were not separated. Can you comment on that? Um, I'm not a very specialist about uh, Venetian life, <laughs> um, so uh, the, the only thing I could say is uh, the, the, I, I guess it was the, the life in, in Venice, but um, if, if, you, um, if you see the very famous Vittorio da Sica film, Il Giardino dei Fizzi Contini, about the Jewish mm -hmm. life in Ferrara, uh, in Italy, uh, you can see that there is a very small separation in the synagogue between uh, men and women. And um, probably the, um, the, the Italian tradition was less uh, severe in terms of separation between men and women. And, you know, mm -hmm. you are very um, prominent uh, Jewish women, intellectual Jewish women in, in the history of Italy. Uh, so, well, but I'm not a specialist of Italian Jews. I, I know very well the cemetery of, uh, for archaeological reasons, of uh, Nic uh, San Nicolo Alido uh, in, in Venice, but less the Jewish life in the 18th century. Okay, um, another uh, sort of uh, relatively narrow question. Where is the village with the memorial to the Shoah that, uh, that you showed? You show the, I guess, the model or the mock-up of, uh, uh, of the memorial, the two pillars, I believe. Um, uh, where, where, is the, where is the built uh, uh, memorial located? I will add to that question, how tall or how large are the, uh, is, is the built uh, object? Oh, well, um, well, it's it's. Um, I, I tried to make a long story short. Uh, it's in the middle of a forest in the center of France, near Bourges. So you know, I, I'm sure you don't know Bourges. 
you know, <laughs> it's like a very small town of the, of the Middle West. Uh, and it's in the middle of forest, just nearby a farm, three or, three or four buildings of a farm in the middle of the forest. The Jews were uh, brought there and then uh, it's, a, it's horrible. Uh, they were thrown in wells alive. 30, mm -hmm. 36. So it's uh, the, the, the name of the village is Savigny en Septaine. But you know, the memorial is completely isolated in, uh, you, you have to know where it is. Well, if someone wants to go, uh, I can give the address and all the explanation, of course. It's a very, um, it's a very uh, sad story. And uh, the sculptor was, uh, was from a very close town, Vierzon. Uh, and uh, two members of uh, his family died in the wells. And uh, well, the sculpture is 200, 250 centimeters, uh, meters uh, high to give, you know, um, a dimension. Two and a half meters, so about yeah. seven or eight feet. Yeah. 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 Okay. All right. Well, thank you for that. Um, okay. Another uh, interesting uh, uh, question here. Thank you for the presentation. When we were in France in the 1980s, most of the synagogues were locked up while most of the churches were not. Is that still the case? Yes. That yes. Is when we say locked up, but basically, uh, yeah, you know, it's uh, it's uh, we we live in a very strange situation. How could I explain? I never uh, felt any um, risk in my daily life since I was born as a Jew. Okay, I live in Paris. It's uh, it's very simple. I never. Um, um, uh, you know, we, we, we never feel any anti-Semitism uh, anti um, in, in, the, in, the, in the current, uh, in, the, in the daily life, but we know that since 1980, with the bombing of the Copernic Synagogue, 1982, the killing in the Goldenberg restaurant, Rue des Rosiers, in the, in the Marais. Then uh, the, the profanations in the cemetery of Car Carpentras in, 19, in uh, 1990. Then uh, the killing in the Ozaratora school, etc. There is there is a series of um, problems and of Jewish uh, killings. Yeah, uh, of Jews. Yes, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm sorry Michel. I'm a little tight. <laughs> uh, uh, and uh, Jewish places, uh, Jewish buildings are uh, places, are, uh, are risky places. So if you come to the museum, for instance, there is a very serious control, of course, much more serious than in the Jewish Museum in New York. Um, and uh, it happens the same uh, in every synagogue. Uh, you, uh, and the contrary is that you can enter in every, uh, in every church in France or every Protestant, Protestant temple. It's a pity. Mm. It, it's, it's, it's very hard to explain that very few events, but very... Um, uh, Visible ones visible ones make a very strange situation because of course um, statistically is nothing you know uh, but of course symbolically it's very powerful uh, just like the the killing of the, the museum of brussels in two, 2014 with four dead people and um, of course it's 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 a problem with very few uh, terrorist, Islamic terrorist, but you, you never know. Comment dire autre chose, Michel? No, I, I, I would say, uh, Paul, just to, to uh, uh, 
you know, complete what you just uh, said is that uh, uh, there is, on one hand, complete freedom. In other words, anybody can go in a synagogue or to the Jewish museum, but there is additional protection, which in fact is something we're asking sometime in the United States also. So you would see, uh, I don't know especially about the museum, but I suppose there are some policemen at the, at the entrance. Uh, and uh, there is uh, uh, all sort of measures in cases that, that there is an alert. And uh, unfortunately, uh, this is due to a uh, uh, you know, few but very serious incidents which, uh, which happened in the recent past. We have no policemen, but we have a very serious security staff. <laughs> yeah, it, M Martha from the consulate, do, do you want to add something uh, there? If she's there? No. She may have um, It looks like she's not with us. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. I think Martha had to leave early. Okay. All right. I have a. I have additional question, also a more broad-based question. As, as Rabbi Serkin mentioned in the beginning, today is the anniversary of D-Day, the Allied invasion of France. The U.S. was seen as a liberator, and our countries were close allies. Uh, uh, historically, I think our countries have been close allies since uh, uh, about uh, the American Revolution. Uh, but uh, do you think the U.S. and France Le are Larry, still we close allies? Hear you. Can you hear me now? No? Oh dear. Yes, I do. Okay. Uh, are the um, uh, comments on the uh, state of our uh, the U.S. and French alliance, uh, or the, the you know the status of our country's uh, mutual friendship and alliance? I don't understand, Larry. To be frank. Uh, okay. Uh, let me go back to the question. Today is the anniversary of D-Day. The U.S. was seen as a liberator of France and our countries were close allies. Do you think the U.S. and France are still close allies? Yes, no doubt. <laughs> <laughs> no doubt. And well, we, we have we followed very seriously the elections. We were very sad with your previous president and we are very we follow very closely what happens with the new president. Uh, mm -hmm. And we, well, uh, we, we wish he, he will uh, succeed and uh, we are very interested in this new economic uh, uh, policy and this kind of new deal and, uh, well, new investments, uh, something very, very dynamic. Uh, no, no. Uh, and the, the relationship is, is very strong. No, well. no problem. Well, as, a, as an American, I would only say, don't hold your breath. Uh, it's complicated here. Um, but um, that's just my own opinion and no one else's. But uh, the um, Delta, thank you for that. Uh, let me ask you a, a back to a museum question. This is my question. Uh, uh, how much uh, how much programming or availability is in English for those of us who might uh, who might visit? Uh, it, it won't be on sunrise on June 10th in my case. But, uh, you know, at some point, uh, uh, I do expect to make it to Paris uh, and we'll visit the museum. Well, we, we have many visits in English. So, uh, but you, you, you have to check on the, um, on the website because sure. there, there, is, there are no visits in English every day, but uh, we have many visits in English uh, of the permanent collection uh, and of the temporary exhibitions. The permanent collection, unfortunately, all the, the captions are not in English. We will change it, but at the moment they are still in French. Uh, but the, um, the temporary exhibitions are both in, in French and English. Great. Uh, a last question I see here. Um, the, uh, will the upcoming exhibit be online? I'm sorry? Will the upcoming exhibit be online? Um, no. Um, um, <laughs> you mean a virtual tour of the exhibition? I, yeah, I think, yeah, making the exhibit available online the way that, uh, um, the way that many museums have been doing for the past year or so. 
Yes, we, we, we have been doing, doing it during the, um, the pandemic uh, for the previous exhibition, but um, the, the next one, Chagall uh, Modigliani Soutine, I don't think we will show it online for um, uh, low reasons, because we have no, well, it would be very expensive to have rights to put the paintings on the alternate side. You know, we are a small museum and, uh, uh, and uh, we, the, the, the building seems very rich, uh, but we don't own the building. And um, we make uh, the program with quite small budgets, by the way. Now, of course, it's, uh, you know, the staff here is 62 people and the Louvre Museum, when I used to work during 16 years, they, were, they are 2000. It gives you um, the comparison. Thank you. Um, one, uh, one person asked, I think I answered the question for the film or movie you were referring to about Italian Jewish life was the Garden of the Finzi Contini's, correct? Giardino dei Fidzi Contini. In Italian, yeah. uh, the Garden of Fidzi Contini, yes. It's based on the, of the novel of uh, Giorgio Bassani. Yeah, yeah. Okay, um, a, uh, one of our Francophile member writes, it's a fascinant, je pense que autant Michel que moi aurons beaucoup. No, sorry, sorry, sorry. Larry, Larry, let me interrupt here. I thought I was writing to Michel, not to you. It's not, not for you, I'm sorry. <laughs> Merci beaucoup. Merci okay. beaucoup. Avec plaisir. I have, a, uh, I have another question. I think some people are really getting, uh, getting geared up here. What's the admission fee for entering the museum? What is the? The, the, the admission fee. Okay. How much do you pay to, to enter the museum? 10 euros. Okay. A little more Could than you? $10. But you know, children doesn't pay, don't pay. Uh, uh, teachers don't pay. Well, they are very, um, there are many, many, um, free entrances and the small exhibitions are for free. Mm -hmm. Great. And, and I think okay. uh, Larry, uh, Paul will be happy to arrange special tour for uh, Larchman Temple members. Well, absolutely. Yeah. If you organize something together, I, I would be very happy to, to do it. Of course, it, it would be fine if you come together. Mm -hmm. Well, not, not all the, the congregation, but <laughs> uh, because the spaces are small, <laughs> as you have seen, yeah. but uh, some groups uh, we, can, we can organize, <laughs> of course. Yeah. Okay, I think um, that is all I see in terms of questions. Uh, numerous people have written merci beaucoup in the, uh, uh, in the comments, I'll pass that along. Um, and uh, Paul, I, I want to thank you very much uh, for uh, generously giving of your time and effort to uh, uh, put this uh, um, put this event together and, and take us through what's been uh, uh, what's been a, a fantastic tour. And, and thanks everyone for uh, uh, for joining and, and, and staying in. Our our attendance is still pretty solid here at the end, so we've we've kept you uh, uh, in, in, enraptured in it. Uh, I see. Um, and uh, the usual, I want to thank uh, you know everyone uh, uh, again. Uh, uh, the, the French consulate, Michel Perez, uh, Rabbi Serkman, um, and uh, uh, Jane, uh, the, the Temple Office, uh, uh, my uh, fellow Brotherhood colleague uh, Marty Canningeiser for all, all that they do to uh, uh, to make these these events successful. Uh, and ask that you stay tuned for uh, uh, next year's uh, Brotherhood programming. Uh, and with that, I think we can bid adieu. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Larry, for giving me the opportunity to present my, my, my museum. And uh, well, I expect your visit. <laughs> so <laughs> you should attend <laughs> the museum. Next time in Paris, definitely. Next time in Paris, yes. Okay.
Bye. Good night. Bye. Morning. Bye. Bye. Bye.